Hey guys, your local leftcom here today to explain why everybody is a tanky, except me. Okay, I joke, but this video isn't actually that far off, so fuck? Okay, so. The first thing I have to say is that you are a hypocrite. You, against, you go against your own claims, and you actually talk about how tankies or Marxist Leninists ruin your movement and cause all these issues within it. And you almost focus every part of the video on them and no one else. And another problem with your video is that you claim to be a left communist, but you don't even know what that means. It seems like you have gotten all your information from Wikipedia. The left has a pretty bad problem right now with how we're bringing in and educating our newer members. We have our own unconscious, pure ideology that's influencing how we're spreading our rhetoric and passing on new ideas. And it's setting up this vicious cycle that's just setting these newer leftists up to do the exact same shit to the new leftists that become after them. And I feel like this can be traced back to a lot of the modern problems of the left, be it Occupy, Syriza, closed off Domanic Orgs, or just plain old leftist meme cults on Twitter. So, grab a drink, get comfortable, because we're about to save the left. I am of course joking. We're far beyond saving. Everything is Leninism, actually. To best understand our problems of educating leftists, let's consider the typical ways in which leftists might get into learning more about things. Let's start with the typical example of a new leftist trying to get into things through, say, Reddit and r socialism. What this new leftist will find immediately apparent is all the differing ideologies on display, be it in the sidebar or places like- It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Duh. Read books. That's the only way you'll actually truly understand praxis and theory. In fact, I recommend that it's better to have a physical book than an ebook on the internet, and it's better to really look at real material things than on digital stuff, you know. Flares next to people's usernames, even allowing you to choose your own with the list scrolling down for ages. The immediate instinct that might hit a new leftist is, damn, I've got to find which one of these is for me. Realistically though, their options consist of Trotskyism, Stalinism, or some kind of libertarian Marxist thing like Luxembourgism. You're incorrect. Anarchists and social democrats some tend to be the most common um, ideologies that new people convert to when they look at left-wing ide ideologies. New leftists also tend to complain about Stalinist and historical communist nations. One of the most fascinating things about these people is that 50% of the time they will complain about Marxist, Leninists, or MLs. All of these just end up manifesting themselves, however, as different strains of Leninism. Rosa Luxemburg was not a Leninist. She disagreed with Lenin and the Bolsheviks on several issues. And your biggest mistake is making these historical claims without actually showing proof. And the funny thing about this is that left communists, regardless of the sub tendency, supported her. This is proof that you have not read anything. You have not really done any research into the things you're talking about. In fact, you don't even know what you're talking about. In fact, another thing to know about left communists is that being a Leninist and a left com isn't a contradiction. In fact, the main con contributor to the theory of left communism was Amadea Bordiga, 
who was a complete supporter of the Bolshevik Revolution. Bordyka called himself more Leninist than Lenin. It's absolutely a 100% a fact that people with Mukes ideological um, confusion are what you call a LARPer. And so whatever choice this new leftist goes with, they will invariably be taking on a Leninist race ideology and all of the baggage that comes with it. Now, all cards on the table, this pretty much is the path I took as an inexperienced leftist trying to get into socialism online, so a lot of this does come from first-hand experience. That being said, it could have gone a lot worse, I could have stumbled upon the legend of r slash communism 101. This thread is swarmed with liberals who think communism is a utopia of individual liberty and fulfillment, where you get to sit around and smoke weed all day. This said, if you know your history, it's clear why left communists are big fans of the slur tanky. If you didn't know, tanky is a slur. For the millionth time, you don't get to jerk off to filmed rape under socialism. Every socialist state that has ever existed has banned porn. Under socialism, hard drugs are obviously banned, and if you try to trade it, you will get shot. Yes, everyone must work, else they are committing parasitarism. Criminals are not an exception, and parasitarism must be punished with forcing you to do what you don't want to. In my opinion, it's the best way to teach the people work ethic. Really? The biggest failure of Stalin was probably not to purge more. It would be similar to the suppression of any other reactionary cultural product, music, films, etc. Addicts will be sent to rehabilitation centers, where they will receive free job training, get educated about the harmful effects of drugs, and perform rehabilitative labor. But what if I film me and my girlfriend having sex with the consent of both parties? First of all, if you have to ask that, your girlfriend is most likely imaginary. <sighs> Hello friends and welcome to Reddit! <laughs> Out of all the actors that you have for your video, only one of them is a good YouTuber. So we have a anarchist that says um, stupid things to people. We have a environmentalist that talks about pointless things and pointless mm, concepts of human and animal rights. Then we have a intersectionalist like liberal. And then we have a post-structuralist that I think is a good YouTuber. And I'm just going to call him CP because I'm afraid I'll just put his name in. It will sound um, offensive to some. Your allies are petite bourgeoisie individuals that are part of the mechanisms of consumerist society. That is that you're not really bringing out around any revolutionary message. In fact, the people that you're promoting are counter-revolutionary and counter to the interests of creating a more socialistic and free society. Leftist subs are a fucking psyop. Now let me get something clear. When I say Leninism or Leninist bias, I don't specifically mean in the traditional sense it's often regarded as the vanguard party that's going to guide the revolutionary movement or something that wants to take over the state for the good of the workers or whatever. Uh, if I did, then certainly uh, council communism wouldn't fall into this at all. What I mean is specifically the interpretation of Marx and what communism actually is. For instance, socialism being a transitionary phase between capitalism and communism, or socialism and communism being two different modes of production altogether, or really just generally socialism and communism being two different things, as well as seeking to place capital in the hands of the workers such that they can expand the forces of production. There is little to no difference between higher and lower stage communism and the stage between socialism and communism. There are two descriptions that mean the exact same thing for different sub-ideologies in one big category. I will say 
that I truly oppose the existence of capital and the ideal that commodification should control our societies. I oppose cooperatives, I oppose state capitalism in China and historical um, Marxist states, and I seek a non-market economy. However, I do not think communism will happen, and I do not think we need communism exactly, but we do need to suppress capital and commodification of resources that are exchanged for a profit and for supply and demand. What socialists must do is oppose capital, and if they seize power, they should suppress markets, and they should break markets and form new mechanisms of economic growth and economic production. And they must do it as quickly as possible. You see, even if you don't consider yourself a Leninist explicitly, you might still find some of these applying to you anyway. Now, if you knew anyway and you don't specifically know what I'm talking about, then that's fine, you don't need to worry about it. The key point here is just that I'm talking about Lenin in regards to his theoretical understanding of Marx and what socialism is, not his organisational tactics or how he applied theory to his time. With Trotskyism and Marxism and Leninism, it's pretty clear how they're both Leninist. But with something like council or libertarian Marxism, you need to remember that while there does exist a mature theoretical framework behind it, the key defining feature of that is a re rejection of the Leninist vanguard party. And so in practice what ends up happening is most of these libertarian or council communists will end up rejecting the organizational methods, but then take on the Leninist interpretations of Marx and what socialism is, which remember is what we're talking about here. In this sense, I would even say this applies to a lot of anarchists who take on the Marx is right about everything but the state position too, because it's still in these Leninist dominated environments that they'll learn about the rest of Marx from. That is right, I did just say anarchists are actually Leninists, don't at me. <laughs> <laughs> so even though a new leftist is initially overwhelmed with choice, what's unbeknownst to them is that everything they come into contact with is still based on a singular strain of Marxism. And it's not unfair to say then that Leninism is everywhere right now. But okay, what if a new leftist doesn't want to go down that route at all? What if they just want to sit back, learn about all the different types of leftism before jumping into a specific ideology, and in the meantime they'll just remain anti-sectarian? Well, that probably is a good and smarter thing than what I did, which was of course the complete opposite, but it comes with its own pitfalls too. And I'm about to drop a hot take here, but bear with me. The Marxist-Leninist Pipeline Why do fascists believe that the Holocaust never happened, but wish it did? It's not just some frivolous logical inconsistency in their worldview, it's actually a necessary part of what makes modern fascism, and it's to do with how they're brought into believing the worldviews that they do. To simplify the whole process by quite a bit, let's take an edgy teenager going on poll for the first time. Immediately you're flooded with infographics, memes, phrases thrown around by different posters all about Hitler and the Holocaust. Actually, it was more likely the Jews died from malnutrition from a war-torn Germany than intentional murder. It was actually physically impossible to kill that many people in that amount of time. If you already consider right-wingers to be relatively trustworthy and start taking this on, even just a little bit, it can be quite world-shattering. Because all your life, you've been told that the Holocaust was a systematic murder of 6 million Jews. But now you're learning that maybe that wasn't quite the case. And if that was a lie, then what else is a lie? Was Nazi Germany as bad as you've been told it was? Was it all just Western propaganda? And from this point on, you're already sucked in. You're ready to believe anything you're told because you already think everything you know is a lie, and you want to learn the truth. It fuels your adoption of a Nazi's view of history, as well as a Nazi's view of society. Maybe if there is this global effort to hide and to distort the truth of the Holocaust, 
Maybe the Jews really do have their hooks in society and maybe something does need to be done. Eventually, you'll reach the point where you never have to be told that the Holocaust didn't happen because you already consider it a necessary step to take anyway. Thus, the Holocaust didn't happen, but you wish it did. This is why Holocaust denial is the main entry point for modern fascism, and why the calling for and simultaneous denying of must be a necessary trait of it. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, this is a spicy take, but this is more or less exactly what happens with Stalinism today or Marxism-Leninism, as they insist to be called. Now, I, yes, yes, comparing Stalinism and fascism on an ideological level is apples and oranges, to put it lightly, but having both received similar levels of vilification throughout the years, it does end up that people get into them in more or less similar ways. Think about it. You go from believing that the Holomador and the Great Purge were just pure acts of evil for Stalin to assert his power, to maybe that not all the purges were totally unreasonable to secure the revolution, and Maybe the famines were just unlucky rain coupled with the rapid industrialization that needed to happen anyway with the Nazis only right next door. Once you're there, you're pretty much open to anything the wackiest of MLs tell you, to the point where you believe that the USSR was actually a gay utopia and Stalin was fucking trans. What you don't realize is that human societies are complex and institutions that make up this society do not follow a absolutist morality that has things in a dualistic binary of good versus evil. In a way, we should look at the structures of governments and societies in a more mixed way. So we will have to apply this to the Soviet Union. You may wonder why is it so totalitarian or why most socialist states have a less libertarian um, feature to their governance? Well, it's simply due to the geography and the material conditions in which that society or government was born into. For example, the Soviet Union was created during a time of constant war, starvation, and reactionary regimes. That is, it was a monarchy under a czar or king that went to a war that affected the entire world and he was overthrown by a democratic uprising that caused a massive civil war that killed millions. And the Soviet Union was the result of these chain reactions of events that ruined the development of the country. And not only that, it had a, went through a period of human development through industrialization called the five-year plan. It is also important to say that the comparison between Nazism slash fascism or communism is a poor comparison because you can simply look at the historical conditions of these ideologies. When you look at Marxist states of the Leninist variety, you realize that they're not always based on nationalism and in many points in history or many variants or tendencies of that ideology, you realize there's an internationalist um, ideal of human society that re rejects any nationalism. You also have the tendency to not be racist, the tendency to help the worker, and the tendency to really not devolve into a one-party um, cult of personality, whatever, you know, the, the typical totalitarian aspects of regimes throughout the 20th century. What has little to do with fascism has really been fetishized by the anti-Stalinists, creating this weak and pathetic narrative that says we are the good guys and we have nothing to do with these people. Well, what they do not realize is that the fascists have their own anti-Stalinists. That is, groups like Strasserites or certain type of reactionaries advocate for the same thing as Nazi Germany and fascism during the interwar period and World War II. But at the same time, they reject these regimes and call them not real fascists or not real right-wingers. And when you look at the Nazi party's purges during what you call a Knight of the Long Knives, you realize that those people 
are comparable to you because they reject history and they do as much as possible to rehash their ideals as something else completely. Another thing to realize is the economic conditions that the Soviets produced after the Russian Civil War were positive that as they developed the country, increased literacy, the last span, and infrastructure in the Eurasian area that they control. What can be said is that you must realize the disadvantages and the advantages of these societies and to completely reject them is as bad as completely praising them. It should also be said that democratic Marxist or democratic societies based on socialism have existed throughout history under what used to be Marxism-Leninism. For example, the Zapatistas were Maoists that created a more free society after the Cold War and therefore created a non-capitalist society. It should also be said that socialism in Nepal and the communists in India have also been a progressive um, movement in the development of socialism in the 21st century. We can also look at South America that has produced many movements and political parties that have created socialistic policies that advance the stages of development in a country into a new and progressive um, condition. For example, the Sardinistas in Nicaragua have produced a social democratic system that has actually improved the conditions of the people to a certain extent. And we also have Bolivia that actually catered to the needs of their citizens kinda until the removal of evil morales or the coup that removed evil morales from power. That is the leader of the country until that point. In fact, there are so many examples of socialism doing well and many of these examples were basically Marxist-Leninists and I find it lazy and actually stupid to just reject all these examples as Stalinist regimes. What one does not realize is that these societies governed by certain political forces deviate from certain parts of their supposed ideology and therefore they are better than some of the countries you actually show as examples of evil Stalinism. This is one really big way in that having a Leninist tinge to a movement can hurt us by simply producing more MLs. I don't believe this phenomenon would be nearly as effective if not for the Marxist-Leninist interpretation of socialism slotting in so nicely into what new leftists are being told anyway. And when new people are systematically being sucked into Stalinism, Trotskyism, or any 20th century orientated theory, it inevitably shapes the type of discourse we have as a movement as a whole, affecting all parts of the left. When all you bring people into is the same ideologies fixed in time, you end up having the same arguments fixed in time again and again. And there are so many leftists online and in real life who do nothing else but have the same debates over was Kronstadt justified, was Catalonia betrayed, is platformism better than council communism? You pick a side, you rehash the same points that college kids back to the 60s have over a thousand times, nobody changes their mind about anything, and you all go home and do the same thing the next day until you're all too tired and fucking old to care about anything and just resign to liberalism. It's a fucking curse among the left that saps us of any real energy and, and a big part of why we haven't moved past these spheres of discussion is because we haven't moved past Lenin. And you see, there's an even bigger problem with this too, because when our ideas don't change, our organizational methods don't change. And that leaves us with our last problem. Shit don't work. Face it guys, shit does not work for the left right now. We're stuck, we're out of ideas, and we're just reproducing the same conditions for newer leftists to keep us in these feedback loops. 
These are higher level problems that aren't directly related to everything I've been talking about up to now, but I do feel when you bring it back down again, it is this historical Leninist residue that does contribute largely to these problems. I mean, let's look at the options we have as the left right now. After the 2008 crash, we saw a revival of leftist politics after what was supposedly the end of history. And what this can be summarized as was Occupy and Syriza. Occupy, the raw, angry outcry against the capitalist system that failed us, which essentially amounted to camping out into the streets for a little bit, followed by an inevitable fizzling out. All the while, no one quite sure exactly what they were there to do or what they might be demanding. It was essentially the live reenactment of that one comic where the anarchists go out into the streets, only to then ask, now what? And then there was Syriza, the far left party in Greece who came to power promising to stand up to the austerity of the EU, followed by immediate capitulation, and whose failure was, I'm fairly sure, the precise moment that Zizek's hope for the world was snuffed out. In fact, some of the only leftist currents we can see in the West today can only be seen in Antifa, who, let's face it, are just a project for the preservation of liberalism which births the fascism they're fighting against in the first place. This isn't necessarily a condemnation of them, I, I do think they're important, but we have to admit we can't look at them for a genuine communist movement. As I've explained before, th there's nothing about Antifa that actually defines them as a political movement with their own goals. They're just an amalgamation of different groups united against fighting fascism in local territory. This lack of options has caused a lot of leftists to start looking for even further existing alternatives. Some calling for a return back to the good old days of leftism, where communists were still chiseled steel workers rather than soy boys like myself, i.e. a return to revolutionary organizations. You know, that sea of three letter names that all more or less think the same thing, besides disagreements of interpretations over a single Trotsky quote. I'd actually joined one at one point called the International Marxist Tendency, or IMT, a group mainly active on UK university campuses who try and act as the fringe of the Labour Party. Honestly, based on my experiences, I feel like the IMT are probably one of the best options out there for leftist orgs. Your biggest um, foolish statement is that you recommend that your viewers join a Trotskyite organization. The organization that you propose these people join is everything you accuse the Marxist Leninists of doing. The Trotskyites are outdated. They think everything in terms of the 1930s and they based their assumptions on Marxism and the world on the views of Vladimir Lenin. You're full of contradictions. You're full of being a hypocrite in many ways. But that's the problem. Orgs are probably one of the biggest examples of the historical problems of the left systemically being taught and passed down to new leftists, which then carry on the cycle. And honestly, again, most of my experience with the IMT were largely positive, and it's full of genuinely lovely people, with the young ones especially having their hearts in the right places. But there are still many problems. I think the biggest offence is probably the live-action role-playing. These guys go around calling each other comrade, draping everything in Soviet imagery, selling fucking newspapers. Like, fuck man, it is the current year. It, it's no surprise then that their focus on politics and discourse often reflect this. Modern orgs are by far the biggest example of this endless rehashing of 20th century debates. Lenin versus anarchists, Trotsky versus Stalin, Trotsky versus Trotsky. It, it just goes on and there's no end to this. There isn't designed to be, and it's much like the online left we described earlier. But the difference is, unlike the online left, who have only do this for usually months at a time, orgs have been doing this for decades. I even remember going to a Marxist Student Federation conference once, which is run by the IMT with the help of a few other orgs as well, and the whole conference was just focused on why Lenin did literally nothing wrong actually. And if that wasn't proof enough, at one point another org got up and started having a go at the IMT for, I think, killing a bunch of them a hundred years ago in Russia. This is the level of shit flinging we're on here. This culture and cycle of endless debates is then perpetuated by the active facility towards any modern theory. Orgs will routinely label anything post World War II as academic and out of touch with the working class. You're basically right, but I think we need to go farther than that. We should not only question Lenin and all the theories that are aligned with him, 
but we should also question Marx and Engels as well. We should destroy classical Marxism and construct a new revised Marxism, a new socialist theory that can actually address the issues of the 21st century. We should really question our narrative. We must destroy our meta-narratives, in fact. We should create new ones that will transcend traditional ideals and thoughts to face new questions that challenge our traditional ideals of what is right and wrong and what is going to be the solution for the world. I recommend that leftists should combine their ideals with postmodernism. With the combination of our theories and concepts with post-structuralism, we will finally realize that ideologies and ideological concepts in general are a complete lie and we can focus on the true things that really affects us. We can destroy the narratives and all these concepts that blind our observations of the world. It's radical!